Okay. Um, so I'm talking to Peyton on the phone. Peyton's right here. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, Peyton. I just had to interrupt. This is just so weird. My, you know my 666, um, Starbucks receipt? It just flew off of my thing up here. The thing where I have it tacked to. It, mm -hmm. it literally just flew off of that. And it was on the ground. <laughs> Like, on my foot. <laughs> Did you have your windshield thing on? No, I mean, like, it was literally, it's, like, stuck. I have it, like, I'm stuck with a little ghost to the emergency flashers button. And it literally flew from the, where it was on the flashers button down to where my, I don't know how to describe it, by my foot, by, like, the gas pedal. I think that's weird because it's 666. We've been doing this whole Christian thing. Okay, call me back. I love you. I'm just sitting here in my car and this thing, you saw where it was at the beginning of this video. It just literally launched off of there. I mean, it's been on there for literally the date, November 14th. So just about a month, bizarre. It's been on here almost a month and it just flew off. I don't understand how that happens. It literally just flew from here to there. That's insane. Yeah, we're gonna call it a night here in Menard. I'm just alone in the car talking to Peyton. Um, we just hung up a second ago, but we'll see what happens tomorrow. You really don't know on this road trip what's gonna happen next. I don't even know what's gonna happen next because we've just had so many things happen so far, so. To like, oh, <laughs> so we're driving right now to San Angelo. We just got out of our motel in Menard. Terrifying experience through and through, just because it was so odd there. Um, but we're just driving through Eden, Texas, and we're just driving by this place. And we saw the literal, it's called right here, the Garden of Eden. So seeing as we're on this Christian journey, I felt like we had to just come see this place for ourselves because this is just such an odd community. It really is. It's just like, it's such a small town, you know, it's like everyone, I don't know, I don't know what I was saying. We're tired. We're tired. So uh, we're gonna go check the garden out now. Time to walk through the garden. Ugh. Of course, some Jimson weed angel trumpet. Hmm. Interesting. I'm interested, are all of these things like biblical, like plants even? Because I know figs are like biblical. Yeah. I wonder. It's a cool tree. But they were just like chill. If there was energy there, it was just like calm. It was though, there, I felt it. Sun. Assuming we go this way? Probably. Yeah. Look at that abandoned building right there. Kind of eerie. Is that abandoned too? That was abandoned up there. It looks like it. Oh, 
Oh, what the hell? Yeah. Wow. So, we are here now in San Angelo, Texas. We've driven here from Menard last night, and for a little bit this afternoon, we're gonna be investigating the case of the lady in blue. Um, she was actually a real woman over in Spain who was dying. She was a nun who was having these visions of her converting some Native American people to Catholicism. And at the same time that that was happening, she was having these visions over here, strangely enough, in San Angelo, Texas, in this area near the Concho River, the Humano Indian people, the Native Americans, they were actually seeing the apparition of a lady in blue. And here she is right here, so many years later. It's said that the Native American people actually saw the lady in blue over 500 times, and that she was the driving force to convert them to Catholicism. So that is just such an interesting story because not only are a lot of these sightings documented, but it's very real. The Vatican just last year actually sent one of their people over to check out all these claims, investigate San Angelo, and determine the Lady in Blue's status in the church and whether she should be, whether she should be included in the canon of saints and whatnot. So, yeah, this statue was just erected actually this year in 2018 and it symbolizes the lady in blue handing down the cross, aka Catholicism, to these people. Very interesting that they now have a statue commemorating a real ghost, Catholic ghost. So we're going to keep checking this out around town, but we thought we'd stop here first to take a look at the statue before we look further into the matter. How's it make you guys feel? Very peaceful. This area is very pretty. Yeah, it's cool. Just like the design of the statue and how the cross resembles Christianity and giving it to the entire culture. It's, it's cool. Very interesting. Yeah. The statue is very beautiful as well. The art. Yeah. They did a very well job. Arthur. Very good job. Very good. Look at the bird. Get the bird. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a stork. I got him. <gasps> Yo. Did you see what <gasps> here at the Catholic Diocese of San Angelo where they have spoken many times about the Lady in Blue. Obviously the Lady in Blue and her apparition they're integral to the story of Catholicism in this area and she kind of facilitated the meeting between the Humanos, Indians, and the people that lived in this area and that led to the conversion and everything like that. But we have not contacted them at all. We're just gonna go ask and see if we can interview somebody about all of this. I don't know exactly how it's gonna go, but we are just gonna go in and try our best. Yeah. So, here we go. Let's go. Okay, so we did not, the bishop was gone for the day, but they were very, interested in letting us hear the history and the story the lady here did she say diocese yeah yeah is it that's how you say it Dias, she says yeah diocese. sorry if i've been mispronouncing that this whole time um but the woman at the diocese her name is francis gave us the number of a woman named tilly so since we're only here for the day gotta try it at least i'm just gonna give her a call right now on my cell phone and uh, we're just gonna record it and see what happens. So maybe she can just tell us over the phone real quickly the history. Welcome to the voicemail. 
voicemail of three two. This person cannot be reached at the moment. Please leave a message after the tone. Hi Tilly, my name is Colin Brown. I'm a film student from UT Austin. We just spoke with Francis down at the diocese here in San Angelo, and we are just looking to do a quick interview about the lady in blue. We are doing a short documentary about her. We're in town just for today, literally for the next hour or two. If you are able to do an interview, it would take literally five minutes. We could even meet you outside of your home just to speak for five minutes. Uh, if possible, we could even do one over the phone, but an in-person interview would be preferred. Hopefully we can hear back from you soon. Thank you so much and have a blessed day. Good, that, that will help. Unfortunately, there's a right after it. Well, there, that's Tilly. So uh, we got one or two spots left to see in town before we head out. Hopefully she calls us back before we leave, but if not, what can you do? We're just trying to see the lady in blues influence here in San Angelo. today was kind of on the fly we have not received a call back from Tilly yet we were obviously unable to meet with the bishop here in San Angelo but we really just wanted to tell the story so basically the lady in blue was an actual nun over in Spain and like I said earlier she appeared to the humano humano people there's a lot of cars so here we step this way we're going to get hit by this uh, rolling death machine that's about to whip by us <laughs> San Angelo, Texas. So her apparition actually appeared to these Humano people like 500 times. She would con or meet with these individual Native American people, members of the tribe, um, convince them to convert to Catholicism. And she actually, supposedly, the spirit facilitated the meetings between the local people that had settled San Angelo and the Humano people. A lot of loud cars right here. That first mass, when the people met for the first time and celebrated all this, was right over here. So let's go check out the marker. We haven't... It's just so like low key. That's what's so weird about all of them. 2.6. Uh, just went down. <laughs> of course, as soon as, every time you say it. Every time. Every time. So we're bringing out the millimeter right here because obviously this was an important place in the point two right here, point four. Dropped. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> get two point six. Two point six. Whoa. Point one. I got the point one. I saw that with my eyes though. Weird. And this is where the first mass was held. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's read it right here. Memorial the Reverend Fray Juan de Ortega establish a miss mission near the site for the Humano Indians, 1632. That is so old. 1632? That's like the oldest thing we've seen yeah. yet. Um, yeah, basically, so this site just kind of memorializes that, the founding of the first mission ever, bringing the gospel of Christ to the native people of the area by the Lady in Blue. The mass was offered here by Bishop Michael Pfeiffer. Isn't, isn't that weird? This marker honors the site of the modern day reunion of the Humano Indians with the people of San Angelo during a prayer service on 2009. The celebration commemorates the bringing of Christianity by the Lady in Blue to this part of Texas and beyond in the early 1600s. So they established also basically June 20th as the Lady in Blue Day. Interesting. So in Texas history, the Indian people, the Humanos, came up you know, on the riverbanks, met with the people right around this site, and they established a mission right around here, which is obviously long gone. But that just kind of means that all of this land has a very spiritual value. And assumedly, the Lady in Blue appeared right here on the banks of this river. Now, what's interesting is that the two Concho rivers actually meet right here on this spot. And this is where this A memorial is and where this mass service was held, the first one between 
San Angelo people and the Humanos. Who knows? It's just a total mystery. Like, was she a spirit? Was she astral projecting to go talk to these people? Was it an actual, I don't know, something that God was creating and showing these people? It's just crazy looking at all of it, how this woman's name was Sor Maria de Jesus de Agrada. She was from Spain. She was a Franciscan nun. And she was having these moments of ecstasy and projecting herself and felt like she was connecting with these native people in her dreams. And she perfectly described the Humano people from over there in Spain, which is what's insane. And apparently she knitted blankets that actually have um, flora and fauna that are native to Texas on the blankets, along with pictures that almost perfectly fit the descriptions of the Humano people. And this is back in the 1600s, so obviously to get a message from here in Texas over to Spain would take months, even years. Oh. So who knows what the truth is behind the story and exactly what happened, but obviously something happened. You know? You got the markers here, the people are talking about it, you got statues being made, something real happened here. Anything uh, on the bell meter? It was 0.1. Oh, 0.1 as I said that. 0.3. Oh, yeah, that is weird. Just like little spikes. 3, 4. Yeah. The numbers. Adds up to 7. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is just on the side of the river, so there's no power lines like right here. I know. What are you doing? Dang. Bye. So I would assume that the mass would have been held like right around here. Yeah. The symbolic, very meaningful meeting of the people. Point two. Point two right here on the bank of the river, where it would have happened. Okay. Point one. Hmm. Zero. Two. Keeps coming and going. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. Yeah. yeah. It's I was like, just thinking like what a place to like experience all of this. It's bad to imagine it with no roads or cars or mm -hmm. all that. Right here on the bank of the river. What do you guys think about the lady in blue? I think it's really weird. And in a way, um, it's very convincing because all the, everything just adds up, like Colin was saying earlier. I don't think that could just happen. Just come back and just say that. What do you think she was a ghost? Well, she was live. She was living at the time. I don't know. I definitely feel like you can take your energy and astral projection. You hear stories of it all the time. You can go wherever you want to if you have the right mindset and you're spiritual enough and you just know what you're doing. I'm, don't think it's that far-fetched, it might have happened. Or it could just been, like you are saying, was God wanting to use her, her image, as like spokesperson for religion and converting. I think there is some divine intervention to it. Because I don't think she was, she had no knowledge of these Humano, right? Was that the no, she did. Oh, she did? Okay. She was seeing them oh, in her yeah, dreams. Oh, yeah, but before, prior to her yeah, vision, but prior no. to her vision, she didn't know, have any knowledge. So it's not like she was seeking out these natives. And, of course, they had no knowledge of her either. So I think there's definitely some divine intervention in God. I think, I, I believe it. Because, again, like, 1630, and it's still here. People are talking about it today. 2009, that was created. Yeah, you're right, because there's nowhere where it really says, like, she wanted to go and just convert the specific group of people in this specific area. So it could have been something else that brought her image here to do it. Yeah, it came to her just like how it came to the natives. It's was serendipitous type things. It's a very interesting story. Definitely. I yeah. wish we could investigate it more, but I don't know where we would even go to do it. It's an interesting town with a lot of history to it. Mm -hmm. And the Lady in Blue is so embedded in San Angelo, which is really interesting. Well, time for our finale. Yep. Time to hit the road again. Hit the road again. On the road again. <laughs>
just now, right when we wrapped. Yeah, just now it's zero again. Dang it, every time. It was just a point three. Five point one two. Okay, that's fake. It went up to no. thirty seven point one. Did you see that? Yeah. That doesn't happen. And this was an area. That really was 37. Yeah, that one. really was. This was an area with camera? Yes. a lot of I've never eggs. seen it. Me either. I've never seen it go past 20. Wait, hold it down to the ground once. 2.3 as soon as I do that. No, it goes. That could mean wires in the ground, though. That's true. No, I don't think so. If it's constant, like. Yeah, there's nothing in the ground. That is weird. That was super weird. It always happens as like soon we're like wrapping up too. Every time we stop rolling, it's like it knows. Yeah. Whatever it is, it knows. Guys, if you look, lady in blue. Wait, what? She's behind the tree. Behind the tree. No, no way. <laughs> A real life happens. Oh my she's God. The, the lady in blue, she's here. She's feeding the geese. <laughs> <laughs> she's oh. real. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Is that guy had a look in his eyes? Yeah. That was weird. Father Jose was found decapitated in a praying position. 45 of the recycled prisoners. The lady in blue appeared right here on the banks of this river. Spiritual value. Point two right here on the bank of the river. Well, there's a church right there. It's a lot quieter in here. I honestly might be related to these guys. It was like some pews. Our Father who art in heaven. Ten point. I've never seen a jump like this around. I hear creaking. There's literally a ghost tour going on. We saw someone in a white coat walk by us. Then we both looked and the guy disappeared. My body just feels like I know. My feet feel like stuck to the ground. I just heard a weird noise. I'm struggling just to talk right now. This is like one of the oldest Lutheran churches in America. It's got light flicker. 